Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how to create a blog. But before we go into the tutorial, let me show you the final result we're aiming to achieve. So here on the landing page, we chose an image to go with our blog, but in your case, you can choose whatever theme that works with what it is you want to blog about. So let's say you are a uh, you enjoy baking, you can add an image here that shows that, you know, your blog is about baking. Over here, you can also add your title to let people know what this is about and also a description. And over here, you can also add a button for a call for call to action. Now on the bottom here, this is where I've created this area here, nice clean uh, for your latest articles. So you can click on any of these articles. So let's go with this one here for now. I'm gonna click here on this first article and it shows me my main image here and also the uh, blog post itself. Now on the top here, I'm also going to show you how to add these share buttons because you want that when people come to your website, they're able to share these articles with their friends or whoever they want to share this with. So this is also very, very important. Before we begin, there's something that is very important that I need to talk about. Now Divi has a special discount. It's 20% off on the summer sale. So if you are going to be designing professional looking websites, Divi is the theme that I highly recommend. And right now, if you purchase it, there's 20% off. Plus, if you use my link in the video description below, I am going to give you even further discounts. Now, the discounts are three courses. One of them is called Divi Blueprint. This course teaches you everything that you need to know about Divi for you to design professional looking websites. I also have Photoshop for web designers. This is also great if you already have Photoshop. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. So before we can actually go in and start building the website, let's talk about the hosting because this is the uh, step which I really messed up when I started learning how to design websites. Now, what makes it so difficult to choose a web hosting company is there's a lot of companies out there that are sending you offers on which hosting is the best. So if you're a beginner, it's quite difficult to find out which company works best and how to compare against them. But the bottom line is you have to choose a company which has great support and also provide a very good hosting uh, solution. So again, it's quite difficult to know this. So I've made things very easy for you because uh, I have you know, pretty much over 10 years experience of designing websites and uh, choosing bet between different hosting companies. So the two that I really break down and really say these ones are the best to go with are SiteGround. Now let's talk about SiteGround for a minute. Now this hosting option is uh, quite affordable. It's very cheap. If I come over here to uh, WordPress hosting and click on get started, it'll show me all my pricing. And as you can see here, it's two, pounds 95 per month. Now, if you're in the US, it'll show this as US dollars. So I'm not sure why. I think it just changes the domain name depending on the country that you're from. Now, over here on the Grow Big, now here you are, you're able to host unlimited websites and you also get 20, gig, uh, 20 gigabytes of uh, space. But of course, this doesn't really matter because what you need is pretty much where to host your website. But of course, if you want to do this as a business, then you want to have a um, this option which allows you to have unlimited websites. Now, here's the thing. When you go with this hosting option, what happens is they're just providing you mainly with the hosting option. You basically take care of your website yourself. So that means... If uh, you don't put the right plugins to make your website secure, then your website might get hacked. And then to try and get it all fixed, it's going to cost you quite a lot of money. So with this option, you have to be up to date and make sure everything is optimized to make sure your website is running effectively. So this also includes adding plugins like caching plugins. Uh, this also includes making sure you're on top of your security every single time. Now, this option, if you're getting started, may be a bit overwhelming. So thankfully, there is a second option and this is called managed hosting. Now, when it comes to managed hosting, there is a company called Flywheel. Now, let's take a look here. Now, with Flywheel, they take care pretty much of all those concerns that I um, initially talked about, which is your website being slow, 
the support is much better. So they take care of very, I mean, they're very, very good with their support. Thirdly, which is the most important is they take care of the security of your website. So all the hacking or all any of that kind of stuff, uh, malware, they take care of it. So you don't need to worry about that. So if you're serious about blogging, this is the option that I'll go with. The only problem is it's slightly more expensive. So I would choose this option if you're really serious about blogging and you really want to go in and create your content for your blog. But this way, you won't have any issues of worrying about your website going down, your website running slow, or even having a service which is not that good. So here, you're just pretty much paying for what you get. And this is the best option that I recommend. And also, these tools or these uh, services that I'm uh, recommending, I'm going to add them in the uh, video description below. So if you choose to use those, I also have special bonuses for you because I also have other courses around the web design uh, stuff which can help you excel and design awesome looking websites. All right, so with Flywheel now, one other thing that I really like about it is the dashboard. So let me just show you quickly what it looks like. So over here, I mean, the dashboard and the price here, you can see it's massive. It's $25 per month for one site. Now, when it comes to creating your website, you can come over here and then you can create your demo website. You know, you add your name, your site name, temporary domain name, and then you add your WP admin username and password. Now, this is the password that we're going to need in order for us to start building our website. So you add everything all here and then create a demo site. So once you create your demo site, it will install the latest WordPress for you. So all you have to do is to go in, start designing it. Once you're happy with the website, you can then um, at a later stage, purchase your domain name and then link it up with your hosting company, which I will show you later on uh, if you choose to go with this option. Now with, um, with this other option here on SiteGround, it's pretty much the same thing. You sign up for your hosting for your hosting. And then once you log in, that's where you install WordPress. And then once you get your WordPress installed, pretty much it's gonna look something like this. So this is the latest theme that comes with WordPress. And as you can see, it's pretty basic, it's boring. So what I'm going to teach you or show you in this video step-by-step step is to make your website look awesome. So let's get started and let's start working on our design. So as you can see, this layout here and this the way this blog looks, it just looks very bland, it's very boring, it's not very exciting. So this is where page builders come in because with page builders, they allow us to design the type of websites we want. And the one that I recommend is Divi. So over here, let me just show you what it looks like. So this is uh, Divi. This is very, very popular. I mean, it's got over 600,000 people actually using this and it's used by web design professionals and design agencies. And the cool thing about this is it also has a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you use it and you feel like, you know what, I'm not really happy with this, you can always, you know, uh, write to them or send them an email and they will give you your refund back. But you know what, I've been using this for over five years and I can almost guarantee you that once you start using this, it's, you're, you're going to love it because you're going to start building any type of website layout. And also, I forgot to mention, there's also a 20% discount. So if you come over here and click on get the discount, uh, you'll actually get a 20% discount. And let me just show you. And also, time is running out. If you get it as, um, as soon as possible, uh, you'll get this 20%. And this is only happening once this year because this is a summer sale. So the next time you'll get this 20% off is next year. Okay, so let's take a look here. Now, there's the 20%. This is $70 per year. And I know sometimes you may say, well, $70, it's quite a bit of money. But you know what? If you buy this, you are able to create unlimited websites. <laughs> That's right, unlimited websites. So you can find a uh, family member, a small company or whatever it is, design them a website and you get your money back just by designing just one website. And over here, if you wanna go for the uh, lifetime access, this is the one that I recommend because all the features and uh, updates that you get, you pretty much get them indefinitely with this lifetime license. So once you purchase Divi, you get a username and a password in your email. And when you come to the Divi website, all you need to do is to click on account and this takes you to this page. Now this is where you want to add your username and password to access all your downloads. So here I'm just gonna enter my username and password. 
click on login and I'll just show you quickly what it looks like. So uh, I'm just gonna save that. So over here, this is the main Divi theme. This is what we need. So I'm gonna click here on download Divi theme. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And there's a lot of tutorials here to show you how to install it. But of course you don't need to worry about that because I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to install it. Now you also have these extra plugins. So you have Blue uh, Bloom plugins. This is for your email opt-in to grow your email list. Again, I'll be doing a video later on about this. Uh, over here, we also have the social share. And this is also great because once you start building your blog, you want, to share your, you want people to be able to share all your articles with others. So I'm gonna click here on Download Monarch because we're gonna use this later. Okay, so once you've downloaded those two, the next step now is to come over here to my account. So this is where you want to click on membership, okay? So the reason why we're here now is because you want to make sure that you have your right membership type. And as you can see here, I have my lifetime access. And then the next stage now is to come over here to API keys. Now this is where you're going to need your API key. So you wanna copy this because, and you just click on it and then that's how it copies it. So once you've copied it now, you come back over here to your website, you click on your dashboard. Then you want to come over here to appearance, click on themes, and then you want to click on add new. Now remember, we've downloaded the DV theme, so you want to click on upload theme, choose file, and then uh, go to downloads folder. Now I have it here, so I'm gonna double click on DV and click on install now. Now I've already gone ahead and installed DV, so it's going to tell me that I've already installed it and the theme installation has failed, okay? No problem, so I'm gonna come back over here. Now, once you've installed it, this is what happens. It's gonna be added here, and all you have to do is to click on activate. Great, so now that we've activated it, the next step now is to add your API key. Now, it's important that you add your API key because when DV releases some updates, it's easier for you to just uh, come over here to your dashboard, click on updates, and then you have all your latest features, which DV releases uh, very, very often. All right, so I'm gonna come over here to Divi, and then I'm gonna click on theme options. So what you wanna do is to come over here to the last tab, click on uh, updates, and this is where you add your username and your API key, and then click on save changes. So once you've done that with that, pretty much that's all you need to do. Now I'm just gonna make sure that I've activated my theme here. So I'm just gonna come back over here on themes and sure enough, this is now activated. Now let's take a look at our website and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna come back over here and click on visit site. Now, as we can see, it's pretty much bland. It's not like it's done anything you know, uh, better. So it's pretty much a blank canvas. That's what we have right now. So let's start designing our website. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna build a website which is around, let's say health or fitness. So that's pretty much you know the theme I'm going with. But in your case, you can choose whatever it is, whether you're, you enjoy baking, so you can just uh, design your website according to um, a baking theme. All right, so back over here, I'm gonna click on dashboard. So the first thing you wanna do is to start by uploading your images so that it's easier for you to find all your images. So I'm gonna come over here to media, click on add new. Now I have images that I have already downloaded on my computer and you may be wondering where I got these images from. Now I use a website called pexels. I mean pixabay.com and the other one is called pexels.com. So you can actually pretty much come in here and download any of these images and use for your designs. So let's say you're doing a, uh, your website is about, uh, about food. I'll just search for food here and you are likely going to get something, you know, quite a lot of images here to do with food, as you can see. All right, so this is looking great. So you can just download all your images. They're free to use. You don't need to worry about any licensing issues. Right, so now that we have our website ready, I'm just gonna close all these tabs here. Now back over here, I'm gonna click on select and then I'm gonna go to my downloads folder and add all my images. Right, so I'm gonna start here. So these are the three main images I'm going to add. So now all these images are added onto my media library, great. So let's start by creating our home page. So this is the page where we want people to see when they land on our website. So this has to look very attractive and it also needs to be a page which reflects what your blog is about. So let's go ahead and click on add new to add our brand new page. So I'm gonna call this page home. So let's start working on our home page. So I'm gonna click here on 
edit with the Diffy Builder. So I'm gonna click here and this is going to give me three options. So the three options are build from scratch, choose a pre-made layout and clone existing page. So I'm gonna go with build from scratch and I'm just gonna close this for now. Now, the next option here is to click this plus button and click on a full width. So what we need here is a full width header. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. So next I'm going to add my title here for my button. So I'm just gonna say, click here for more. And over here for our title, you can add whatever title you need to add, but I'm just gonna use some dummy text here from Lorem 2. And I'm also going to do the same for my description text. So I'm gonna copy it, come over here and paste it in place like that. All right, so now that we have uh, this information here set, the next stage now is to come over here to the design tab. So this is where we can now customize our layout. So I want all my text to be centered like that. And the next thing I'm gonna do is to make sure that all this is shown in full screen. So now I can go in and start adding all my images. So I'm gonna go back over here to content, click on background, and then I'm gonna click on the third tab. So this is where we want to click this plus button to add our image. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my image, click upload an image, and now you can see just instantly I've just added this image to my background. The next stage is to come over here and choose parallax. So I'm gonna scroll down here and activate use parallax. So there's two options, there's CSS and there's also true parallax. So you can just choose which one you're gonna go with. So I'm gonna leave mine at CSS. Right, so let's move on and make some customizations to our image as well. So here, as we can see, our text is not very easy to read because our background is quite bright. So let's come over here to design, overlay, and this is where we can add a color, an overlay color. So I'm gonna click here on this color here, but of course, if you want this to be black or whatever color it is, you can always come in here and make those adjustments. Now, what's important here is to click here and make sure you drag the slider down to show a little bit of the image that we have here in the background, just to make this text easier to read. All right, so I'm pretty much happy with that, or if I need to go with this color, I could just go with that as well, and just show a little bit of it. All right, so the next stage is to customize our text. So I'm gonna click here on this brush tool. So this makes it easier for me to go directly to where my settings are. So I'm gonna make this all caps. I'm gonna come over here on default font, change it to Poppins. And by the way, you can use any type of fonts you need. All these fonts are Google fonts and they're free to use. Now over here on the font weight, I'm gonna change this to bold. And then I'm gonna to come to my description text. Again, I'm gonna change this to Poppins. I'm gonna increase my size to about, uh, let's say 19. All right, so that's looking okay. I may want to increase my line height over here. So let's set it to about 1.8 so that it's easier to read. Now the next stage is to customize our button. So I'm gonna click on this brush tool and we want to activate use custom styles for button. Now right away, I can just go here and add my, back, my button background color by clicking this plus button, adding my color like that. Now for my border width, I'm just gonna drag this and add zero to it because I don't need any border width. <clears throat> now I want to customize my text as well. So I'm gonna come over here for my font. I'm gonna change this to Poppins. And I may want to make it all caps. Let's see how this looks. Actually, no, I'm gonna leave it as it is. And pretty much my hero area here is looking great. Now, one thing that I may also want to do here is to make sure that my button is linking somewhere. So you wanna come over here to link and a button one URL link, this is where you want to add a link to where you want your, uh, your visitors to go to when they click on that link. And then save. Now, when we started building on this page, we noticed that we had this um, initial section here, so we can just delete that and that's how you get rid of it. So this is how you create the main part of our landing page. Let's go in and start adding all our blog articles because at the end of the day, this is all about blogging. So to add our articles, I'm gonna click here on dashboard. Come over here to post, click on all posts. So as you can see, we just have the default hello world. Now what I normally do is I just come in here and delete it because we don't need it. 
Next, let's start adding all our articles. I'm gonna click here on add new. So let's call this article one. So here we're gonna do we're gonna do things slightly different. So instead of using the Divi Builder for this, we're just gonna go with the uh, default editor. Now this is the default Gutenberg editor. Now you may be asking why am I using the default editor? How this editor works is it makes it speeds up the way you actually add all your blog posts and your images rather than just doing it one by one with the Diffy Builder. So this is why I prefer doing it this way. And also as features are being added, we'll be able to do even more designs to this at a later stage. So having everything here in the default editor is the best way to go. All right, so let's start by adding all our content. In fact, let's start with the heading. So I'm gonna come over here and choose a heading. So I'm just gonna go with, okay, these two words as my heading. So if I click here on this plus button, it, it tells me to add a block. And as you can see here, this is the heading. So I can paste my heading like that. Click on this plus button. And this time I'm gonna add a paragraph. So I'm gonna click here on paragraph. And then I'm just gonna copy a bunch of text from here and paste my paragraph text. Now, for this to look really, really nice, it needs to go with an image. So let's come over here to our document and add our image. So I'm gonna click here on featured image, set featured image. And let's say our first article here is about fitness. I'm going to select this image right here. Now let's do a quick preview. So I'm gonna publish this. And now let's take a look at how this post looks like. Okay, so there we go. So this is our first article. It's got the text here and people can also come in and submit a comment. So this is really cool, very easy to set up. Now, let's say you want to customize this sidebar. I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to do that as well because this is also really important to uh, for people when they come to your website to really come in and click on any of the items that you need them to go to. All right, so back over here on dashboard. Now let's go back to posts, all posts. So we have article one, now let's add article two. So I'm gonna click on add new, and this is by the way, how you would be adding all your new blog posts. So you just name it article two, use default editor, uh, give this a heading, choose a, choose a different word here. Okay, now over here, we're gonna add a paragraph. Now, what you can also do here, uh, we're not limited to just adding uh, headings and paragraphs. You can also add other media like video. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and let's say you want to add a video onto this. So I'm gonna search for my video block. I'm gonna select it here. Now this allows me to add my video from a URL. So I'm gonna come over here and choose a URL from YouTube. Right, so I've just gone to my YouTube channel and I've copied a link of a video that I've just done recently. So I'm gonna click here on insert URL and I'm gonna paste my URL just like that. And you can see my video has been added. Now over here, we also want to add a featured image. So I'm gonna click here on set featured image. And this time we're gonna go with this image here. Click on select and then I'm gonna hit publish and publish one more time. Okay, so let's add one more post. So I'm gonna come back over here. In fact, if you wanna add it quickly, you can just come over here where it says new and then click on post. So again, let's give this a title. So I'm gonna paste my title here, use default editor. And then this time I'm gonna start with an image. So I'm gonna search for image, set my image block. And again, I can click here on media library. So this takes me to my image library, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna click here on the image I'm gonna use, click on select. You can also add a caption here, but of course I'm just gonna leave that as it is. And then I'm gonna add some text to go with this. So I'm gonna copy my text here as I did before and paste it. So pretty much this is the process of adding all your blog posts. And let's say you want to add a URL. You can also come over here and highlight the text that you need to add the URL to. Click here on this link and then this will is where you add your URL. So I'm just gonna add a blank one there, but as you can see, it now shows as a clickable link. Over here, let's set our featured image. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Click on publish. And then I'm gonna hit publish one more time. Now let's click on view post. And that's how our post look like. Now, because we added this, uh, we, because we use the same image here, you can see that it's also taken the image from the featured image and now it's showing both of them. So. If you wanna add some images here, in fact, you know what, let's go in and fix this. 
So you would actually do um, come over here and delete it. And to delete it, you can click on these three little dots here and click on remove block. And then you can hit update. Okay, so pretty much we have uh, three posts. So to see them one more time, you can just come over here to all posts. So these are the three posts that we've just created. Now, how do we show them on our main page, which is the home page that we've just created? So if we come back over here to visit site, you'll notice that this is only showing all our blog posts, okay? Now we want this layout to, to look much, much better, you know, and also much neater. So to do that, we're gonna come over here to dashboard. And then you want to come on appearance and then menus. So over here, these are all the buttons that we have. And the one that's active here is the home. So we just want to leave that as it is. I just wanted to make sure that this is right here as a custom link. Okay, now the next stage is to make sure that our website is set up so that it has the home page that we've just created as the main landing page. And to do that, you want to come over here to settings, reading. So by default, it's set to latest posts but we want to change this to static and then we're gonna choose our page and set it to home. And here it is, I'm gonna select home, save changes, and pretty much that's all we need to do. I'll do this one more time. Right, so now I'm gonna open this in a new tab and this is now our home page. If you recall, this is what we were designing earlier on. So now we want that when people come to our website, they can actually see all our posts on our main page. So let's fix that. So to do that, you wanna click on Enable Visual Builder and then click here on this plus button to add a new section. So I'm gonna click this plus button, click on Regular and we're going to go with a single column here and let's add a text module. Now in this text module, we're just gonna call this Latest Posts or Latest uh, Articles, okay? So this is gonna be the title of this section. So next, I'm gonna come over here to Design Text, I'm gonna make sure that this text is centered. I'm gonna give it a color here, all caps. And then I'm gonna change my font here from default to Poppins. Make it slightly bigger. And I'm gonna add a bit of letter spacing here. And then save. Now it's time to add our module that's gonna have all our blog posts. So as you can see here, it's quite difficult for me to add to, to access the plus button. Now Divi has a new trick uh, up its sleeves. If you click here on these three little dots, it will take. you can go here into wireframe view and now you can add it easily. So I'll click here on this plus button and we need the blog. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. So if you wanna go back to the visual mode, all you have to do is to click here on this little arrow here and now it takes us to the front view. So all our articles that we've just created now are showing on the page. So we may not, this may not be the best way to actually show this to be honest. So let's uh, work on our layout. So over here, you can actually choose which categories you want to show your content from. So let's say you have a fitness blog and you do some articles on let's say dieting and then sometimes you do some stuff on fitness. So if you want to separate those two, you can actually separate what you display here by choosing the actual categories. And as you add them, they'll be shown here. And over here on the post count as well, you can set it to maybe just show three. So in our case, I prefer to show three. And then if they need to actually go to the blog page, they can actually go and see more. Okay, so now that we've added this, the next step now is to come over here and set our accept uh, length. So pretty much our accept is this information that we have right here. Okay, so you can go in and customize it if you need to. Now, the next stage is the elements. So this is where you can come in and disable items that you don't need. So let's say you want to have a read more button. If you click on that, now we have read more, but to be honest, I don't really have that. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. Now show author, you can also get rid of show author. And now it only shows the date and the category. Now let's say the category as well, you wanna get rid of that. You can just click here on no and it'll only show the date the article was released. And if you wanna show how many people are commenting, you can also click here on show comment count and this will show you, you know, the comment count over here. So we're not done yet with, uh, with the layout here. So I'm gonna click here on content and here we want to show our content as a grid. So to show it as a grid, you wanna come over here to design, 
click on layout. So at the moment, it's set to full width. So you want to click over here and set it to grid. So now it shows all our posts as, as a grid. So that's looking great. Now, we can also go in and customize all these headings, make them look the way you want. So let's start with the heading here. So I'm going to click here on this brush tool, and this will take us directly to our heading. So the first thing I'm going to do is to change my font to pop-ins and also my color. Okay, now if I need to change the, uh, the text in here as well, I can click on this little brush tool. And let's change that to pop-ins as well. And I'm just going to reduce the size just a little bit, okay, to about 13. Okay, so that's looking great. Now, finally, let's work on the date. So I'm going to click here on the date. And we are also going to change the date here. Make it italist like that. Change it to pop-ins. Okay, let's just reduce the size a little bit and change the color as well. All right, so pretty much I'm uh, happy with this layout. So when people now come to our website, they can just land on this page and see all our latest articles. Okay, so let's save this and let's save the page. So now we're gonna exit the Visual Builder. So when people visit our website, this is what they're gonna see. So this is going to be your title for your blog. This is going to be your description. And then this can also be a call to action. Now on the bottom here, this is showcasing your latest articles. So let's say I go ahead and click on this one here. This is now the page and they can leave a comment and so on. Now, remember, I mentioned that uh, it would be nice if people could share your articles with others when they come to your website. Now, uh, now that you've uh, bought Divi, you're actually buying a membership, which also gives you access to other plugins. So let's go ahead and add that plugin. So I'm going to come over here to my dashboard and then I'm going to come to plugins. Click on add new and the plugin that I'm uh, talking about here has already been downloaded downloaded in the beginning. So I'm going to click here on choose file and it's called Monarch. It comes free because you're a member now of Elegant Themes. So I'm going to click on install now, activate plugin. So now we can go into our plugin settings and we can choose where we want to have our share icons to be. So the location here, we can choose the sidebar, inline, pop up, fly in. So I'm going to have it as inline. And over here on the networks, this is where you can choose which networks you want. So Facebook, Twitter, uh, let's see, Pinterest. And what else can we have here? So let's just go with those three. I'm going to click here on apply. And here is where you can add your Facebook URL, your Twitter URL, and so on. So I'm just, I'm just going to leave that as it is. And then here is where you can choose your icon style. So pretty much I'm going to leave the default as it is. Come over here to general settings. And this can also show your count updates. So let's say people have shared your article. It will show you how many people are sharing that article, which is pretty cool. And this is also where you can add your Facebook, AP, uh, Facebook ID and your app secret. But of course, we're going to leave this as it is for now. I'm going to click on Save Changes. Now I want to go to my website and see what this looks like. So again, this is our landing page. So let's say someone comes over here, clicks your article. Now you have your share buttons. So this is really cool because they can share now this article with, you know, uh, on their Facebook. So as you can see, as I click this button here, I can now share this to my story. I can say something about this and then click on post to Facebook. So that is how easily you can add share buttons on your website without spending any extra money. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and also hit the bell notification. By doing that, you'll be notified when I release new tutorials.